While Martha Stewart casually chopping hands off of enthusiastic fanboys metaphorically isn't something new or surprising, the surprising bit comes when you realize it's all happening in the name of promoting a drink. Yep, the drink you see attached to a severed hand is aptly named Liquid Death, showing off their special edition black can that has the internet questioning <laughs> I've got to admit, I've probably enjoyed making these a little too much. Well, a lot of things. This audacious and undoubtedly bold marketing move generated over 3 million views on Facebook alone. And in their first month, Liquid Death sold over $100,000. With total funding reaching impressive heights, what exactly is Liquid Death? And how did it achieve such a humongous valuation of $700 million? Mark Cesario, the brain behind Liquid Death, remembers clearly that his roots weren't in the beverage business since his career started. With a background in graphic design and a stint in the music industry, Cesario was bugged, or you can say pestered, by the corporate world's lack of creativity. He noticed that while junk food brands had fun with their marketing, healthier options were starkly serious and often came up with commercials that lacked humor, intensity, and suspense. The idea for Liquid Death came from a desire to make healthy products more appealing, fun, scary, and gore to some extent, you can stock it from their ads. The name, inspired by a concert experience, was meant to challenge the norm and inject humor into the health drink market. The funny thing Cesario noticed was that the musicians upon performing at the Vans Warped Tour Music Festival were drinking water instead of energy drinks sponsored by Monster Energy Drink, all to remain hydrated. Despite the obvious and expected initial backlash, accusing the brand of promoting toxic masculinity, Cesario saw an opportunity to stand out and make health-focused products more social media friendly. Besides, he attributes his company's significant upturn in revenue to this ingenious name, which he thinks served the purpose of creating a company that combined both entertainment and beverage. He firmly believes his fans will love the company as it will give them enough reason to laugh. Cesario believes in being physically present and involved in his business, a philosophy that extends to his products design and marketing, rather than chilling on the couch being a sluggish self-millionaire. He aimed to create a product that people would want to share online, not just for its health benefits, but for its borderline absurd punk rock charm, which gave people more than one reason to shoot pictures and show them to their friends, easily spreading the word and advertising the product for them. To prove the viability of his idea, Mark decided to shoot a commercial for it without even producing a single can, but rather relying on a 3D render. Water is not yoga. Water is liquid death. Liquid death gained a lot of attention, and this approach has resonated as evidenced by the brand's $100,000 sales number in its first month. My question to you is, Will you ever do it when your products aren't ready yet? Liquid Death's dedication to sustainability is evident in its innovative packaging choices, specifically its decision to use cans that are 100% recyclable. And that's why Liquid Death is pure mountain water. It comes in aluminum cans, because they're infinitely recyclable. Ten percent of all profits go to help ocean plastic cleanup. This strategy that directly relates to a greener planet and a positive impact on the environment confronts a ton of lingering issues linked to the use of plastic bottles, which not only stands as a representation of the brand's ecological responsibility, but also their take on reducing the environmental impact. Think of Captain Planet if he were a bit more grunge. By making an effort to mitigate the carbon footprint, Liquid Death was able to resonate with health-conscious individuals alongside a broader audience that prefers to keep the planet safe. This approach showcases the brand's deep understanding of the concept of sustainability in the modern world and skyrockets them as a leader in the eco-friendly initiative as a representative from the beverage industry. <laughs> and it burns when I breathe. <coughs> it's refreshing to do good, so please, <laughs> keep our oceans beautiful. An unconventional marketing method and the whole save the planet strategy aside, Liquid Death's bizarre approach attracted more than a few high-profile yet like-minded individuals, 
house brand legends such as the Swedish House Mafia, skateboarding messiah Tony Hawk, and even the Alkaline and Anti-Flag were all under the same banner. Cesario even wanted to make a deal with Netflix to further promote his brand and catapult itself into the limelight. The collaboration imbued the brand with a relatively cool and edgy persona that resonated with a wide-reach audience, maintaining a 3 million follower count on Instagram. Retailers, recognizing the burgeoning demand, rapidly onboarded Liquid Death, significantly widening its availability both online and in brick-and-mortar stores nationwide. This expansion, coupled with a viral social media presence, has fueled a meteoric rise in sales, showcasing year-over-year -year growth that many brands can only aspire to. During the pandemic, in March 2020, supermarket chain Whole Foods contacted Mark Cesario and wanted his brand to go full national as they saw the potential of liquid death. And since then, sales have grown from $2.8 million in their first year to $45 million in 2021. The $700 million valuation was mostly due to the liquid deaths appearing on the shelves of over 60,000 retail locations throughout the US, which include big players like 7-Eleven, Walmart, and Target. As of 2023, they were able to generate a revenue of $100 million every year. Liquid death has certainly turned heads in the investment world, sparking a mix of skepticism and intrigue among industry watchers. Initially, Many investors were taken aback by this bold figure, questioning whether a brand known for its canned water could truly command such a premium. However, the visionary leadership of Mark Cesario, along with the brand's impressive market performance, has gradually won over many skeptics. The real test now lies in sustaining this growth trajectory. Liquid Death is eyeing a strategic shift to domestic production in the United States aiming to slash freight costs and amplify its profit margins. This move is not without its challenges, especially when drawing parallels with beverage behemoths like Coca-Cola, who had their share of setbacks. Despite these potential hurdles, Cesario's confidence remains high. According to Cesario, a beverage industry's success correlates to a lot of things, but taste is not one of them. Since he saw people at concerts, sponsored by Monster Energy drinking regular water in Monster cans, he also doesn't adhere to the idea of how a drink needs to rely on extreme sports to show the need to be relevant, like Red Bull for instance. What he used as weapons was humor, a sense of responsibility for the environment, and something the masses could relate to and combine them for a formula of success. In 2022, they hit a rough patch with ocean freight costs skyrocketing, gobbling up nearly half of their expenses at 47%. They're not letting that hold them back though. They've set their sights on slashing those costs down to 21% this year. And there's more good news on the horizon. They're eyeing profitability by 2024, with plans to make domestic shipping a mere 11% of their total expenses. Now, let's talk numbers. Liquid Death reported a cool $100 million in revenue for 2022. But here's the catch. They weren't profitable, with gross profits hovering around 12%. That's quite lean compared to the 50% target that's more common in the beverage world. When it comes to their valuation, Liquid Death stands out. They're valued at about seven times their sales. To put that in perspective, it's higher than Pepsi, which sits at three times sales but not quite reaching Monster's nearly nine times sales. Liquid Death has carved a niche for itself in the crowded beverage market through bold branding, a commitment to sustainability, and a product that defies convention. As the company looks to the future, the question isn't just about maintaining its valuation, but how it can continue to innovate and inspire in a sector ripe for disruption. Liquid Death isn't just a drink, it's a statement. And if its meteoric rise is anything to go by, this is one brand that's not just here to stay, but to lead the charge in redefining what a beverage company can be.